Failure to thrive exists when an infant or child fails to grow and develop normally. These children do not obtain or properly use calories and consequently do not gain enough weight for their age or height. The weight of children with failure to thrive is consistently below the third percentile on the growth chart. Causes can be non-organic or organic. Non-organic failure to thrive is caused by environmental, economic, and psychological problems that affect the parents or caretakers. Non-organic risk factors include parents who are very young or immature, problems in the mother-child relationship, marital discord, poverty, single parenthood, low tolerance for stress on the part of the caretakers, alcohol and drug abuse, infant drug withdrawal due to maternal addictions, maternal anxiety or depression, lack of social support from family members and friends, inadequate breast milk, lack of parental information concerning nutrition, consistent errors in the preparation of formula, and forced feeding of the child. Organic reasons for failure to thrive include congenital heart defects, congenital abnormalities such as cleft lip and cleft palate, neurological lesions, gastroesophageal reflux, cystic fibrosis, microcephaly, chronic renal failure, malabsorption syndrome, and AIDS. Signs and symptoms of failure to thrive are weight loss below the 3rd to 5th percentile, failure to gain weight, anorexia or abnormal consumption of food, loss of subcutaneous fat, poor muscle mass, infrequent or scanty stools, vomiting and diarrhea, and general neuromuscular spasticity. Children with failure to thrive due to inorganic causes may have additional symptoms. These children are usually apathetic or irritable and unresponsive to cuddling. They may appear withdrawn, avoid eye contact, smile rarely, and behave like they distrust their caretakers. Some children have poor hygiene because of neglect. Signs of infant neglect include dirty body, fingernails, and clothes, severe diaper rash, and a flattened occiput from being left in one position. Untreated, a failure to thrive will cause developmental or life-threatening complications. They include developmental delays, language delays, learning disabilities, social behavioral problems, vitamin deficiencies, dehydration, and fluid and electrolyte imbalances. The child may also develop metabolic acidosis due to an inadequate intake of calories and subsequent starvation. You can help identify a child with failure to thrive. How? Physically assess the child, observe family interaction, and evaluate the home environment. Begin by asking questions about the child's and parent's past and present medical history. Does the child have any congenital or physiologic disorders that could cause failure to thrive? Do the parents have physical or mental health problems that could interfere with their ability to care for the child? Has the mother experienced severe anxiety or depression since the child's birth? Do the parents have a history of substance abuse? Next, obtain a social history. Ask about the family's economic resources and social support system. Are the parents struggling with money concerns? Do they have sufficient funds to purchase formula and nutritious foods? Does the mother work outside the home? Are the parents in a good relationship? Are grandparents or friends available to help? Do the parents belong to social groups that could assist them with childcare? Finally, obtain a detailed history of home feeding practices. What is the usual feeding schedule? Where do the parents feed the child? How often do the caretakers feed the child and for how long? Does the mother breastfeed the child? If so, is the baby able to latch on, suck, and swallow without problems? Is the child bottle fed? If so, what type of formula is used and how is it mixed? Is the child receiving supplements and snacks on a regular basis? What is the child's usual behavior during feeding? Does the child drool, pull away from the bottle, arch or cry? Is there anything that appears to upset the child or distract the child during feeding? Is there anything that helps the child relax during feeding? After obtaining detailed histories, weigh and measure the child and perform a physical assessment. Also observe how the parents interact with their child. Note if the child seems withdrawn or fearful. Finally, obtain a CBC and an electrolyte panel. The child with failure to thrive is at risk for anemia, fluid and electrolyte imbalances, and acid-base imbalances. After assessing the child, determine the pertinent nursing diagnosis. Nursing diagnosis include altered nutrition, less than body requirements related to inadequate intake and or utilization of calories, altered growth and development related to inadequate nutrition, 
activity intolerance related to inadequate caloric intake, fluid volume deficit related to inadequate fluid intake, and altered parenting related to economic or psychosocial factors. Major goals of treatment are to reverse the malnutrition and provide the child with enough calories to achieve catch-up growth and ideal weight. Inform parents that many healthcare professionals will be involved in their child's therapy. It will be a multidisciplinary team including a pediatrician, nurse, dietitian, physical therapist, social worker, and mental health counselor. Of course, parents, grandparents, and other family members are at the vital core of the child's therapy team. The first step is to teach the family supportive feeding techniques. Simply talking to parents about feeding is not enough. You have to demonstrate proper feeding techniques and then observe the parents as they feed the child. Encourage parents as they learn. Begin by teaching them to develop feeding routines and rituals like establishing a feeding schedule and limiting feeding times to 30 minutes or less. Parents should feed their child in a quiet room with minimal distractions. Encourage them to use the child's favorite utensils, dishes, and high chair. Stress that it is important to maintain a calm, unhurried approach during feeding. Children usually respond well to simple directions, encouragement, and praise. Caution parents to never force feed, scold, or punish a child for not eating. They should calmly persist in their efforts to feed the child for at least 10 to 15 minutes before ending the feeding session. Remind them to introduce new foods slowly and provide the child with frequent nutritious snacks or caloric supplements. Malnourished children benefit from multivitamins, iron and zinc supplements, and caloric supplements such as polycose, rice cereal, and vegetable oil. Ask caretakers to maintain a food diary of all the foods and fluids the child ingests. You'll review and evaluate this record routinely. Children with failure to thrive are usually treated on an outpatient basis. Monitor these children closely for weight gain and improved nutrition. Most children do improve with supportive feeding techniques. Only in extreme cases of malnutrition will the child need tube feedings or intravenous therapy.